Our invocation will be offered to us by Erlanger Police Lieutenant Sean Sims. Lieutenant Sims, thank you. Thank you, sir. Bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these dedicated men and women that are the leaders of our community. Lord, tonight as they come together, we pray that you give them wisdom and a boldness to make decisions that are just and right. Lord, we ask that your divine providence guide them in their decisions and their work that they do. In all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'll call the November 4th, 2014 meeting of Erlanger City Council to order. I ask if you all will please stand while we pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Every couple of years, our city council meeting seems to fall on election day. And, a, and continuing an Erlanger tradition, we come here and go back to work. Roll call. Mr. Longshore. Present. Mr. Burke. Here. Mr. Dunhoff. Here. Ms. Skidmore. Here. Ms. Sudcamp. Here. Ms. Pitts. Here. Ms. Kyle. Ms. Cahill. Here. Mr. Cahill. Here. Mr. Brown. Here. Mr. Blankenship. Here. Mr. Howard. Here. Here. We have a quorum. We may go. Vicki, of course, is with her husband this evening. Who, uh, she wanted to stay home with him, so I understand that. Um, you all should have on your have received uh, minutes of the regular council meeting of October 7th, 2014. Are there any corrections or additions to be made at this time? If not, I'll entertain a motion to be adopted. A motion by Ms. Sudcamp, second by Mr. Blankenship. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right, now's the time on our um, agenda for special presentations. The first special presentation is supposed to be a secret, but I don't know if it's still a secret anymore. <laughs> but I'm going to read a proclamation. This is a proclamation by the mayor of the city of Erlanger, Kentucky, to all to whom these presents shall come. Whereas 50 years ago, Frank Wickman began his professional journey as an attorney in Erlanger with his late wife Helen by his side. Two years later, he became a prosecuting attorney for the Erlanger Police Court. In 1974, Mr. Wickman also began serving as Erlanger City Attorney, a position he holds still today. What began as an opportunity flourished into a career-long commitment to the Erlanger community and to municipal law. And whereas in 1980, Mr. Wickman purchased John Corman's legal practice, partnered with attorney Linda Schaefer, and opened Wickman and Schaefer. They practiced law together for 27 years until Ms. Schaefer's departure. Mr. Wickman's daughter, Kim Quinn, had already joined the practice as an attorney. Anita Stephan remained with the practice as an assistant. His other daughter, Christy Arthur, also an attorney, joined the family business, which is today known as Wickman and Associates. And whereas Mr. Wickman and his daughters and Ms. Stephan are dedicated to those they represent and to the Erlanger community, their law practice covers a wide range of legal issues and includes dispute resolution. They take pride in the community as business owners and employees, current and previous residents, members of local organizations, and involvement in local government. And whereas the city of Erlanger is honored that Mr. Wickman and Wickman and Associates continues to be part of Erlanger's community. In appreciation and respect for the work, commitment, and tradition Wickman and Associates has given Erlanger residents over the year, years, the city of Erlanger would like to honor Mr. Wickman and his associates by celebrating their 50 years of success in Erlanger. Now, therefore, I, Thomas L. Rouse, mayor of the city of Erlanger, Kenton County, Kentucky, do hereby proclaim November 5th, 2014 to be Wickman and Associates Day in Erlanger and do commend this observance to all of our citizens. Given under my hand in the seal of the city on the fourth day of November 2014. Frank, congratulations. We also have keys to the city lapel pins for you. Well, thank you. I uh, appreciate it very much, Mayor. It's uh, 
like I said before, um, it's, it's not work, it's fun. And I really appreciate everything that this city council and this city has given to me and my family. Thank you very much. You've got some family in the back of the room. Let's all turn around and wave to Wickman and Associate family. <laughs> where, where did you hide them all? They're all hidden out there. That's why you came out and got them. That's why. All right. we, he was going to go out there and spoil the surprise, and, and Sherry had to go out and grab him by the back of the head and bring him back in here. <laughs> okay. Congratulations, Frank. 50 years. Wow. I think I've been practicing law 36, and I really feel old, so 50. I guess for that. He's still trying to say it. There, <laughs> it, it. He's still, you know, it's like the, the, the Everetti bunny, bunny. He keeps clicking away. There he goes. Okay. Now we've got some state champions. We always like to honor our state champions. This is a, another proclamation. Uh, as I get ready to read this, I would like for the St. Henry High School volleyball team and coaches to come stand in front of the podium here. Come on up, folks. Come on there. Straight across. Straight across. There you go. Straight across. All right. You all done this before. <laughs> This is a proclamation by the mayor of the city of Erlanger, Kentucky, to all to whom these presents shall come. Whereas in 2014, St. Henry High School's girls volleyball team, led by head coach Maureen Kaiser and assistant coach Sean Schwartz, had an exceptional season. And whereas the girls volleyball team defeated Monroe County, Harlan County, Lexington Christian, Washington County, Allen Central in the semifinals, and Greene County in the finals, to become the 2014 Volleyball All-A state champions, their third championship in a row. And whereas the members of the 2014 St. Henry Girls Volleyball team are seniors Natalie Gurren, Kendall Krause, Carly Lemkul, Ashley Noble, juniors Danny Knoll, jo Joanna Rabitsky, Kayla Riggler, Cassidy Schreiber, Brooke Shea, Janelle Tobler, sophomores Paige Noble, Madison Reed, Savannah Stevie, and statisticians Emily Baton, Abby McLaughlin, and Megan Oldfield. And whereas team members Natalie Gurren, Carly Lemkul, and Janelle Tobler were selected to the all tournament team, and Kendall Krause earned MVP honors. Now, therefore, I, Thomas L. Rouse, Mayor of the City of Erlanger, Kenton County, Kentucky, do hereby proclaim November 6, 2014, to be St. Henry Girls Volleyball Team Day in the city of Erlanger, and do commend this observance to all of our citizens given under my hand and seal of the city of Erlanger on this fourth day of November 2014. Congratulations, Crusaders. Uh, our city clerk has a copy of the proclamation for each one of you. And who wants the original? You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> We're really proud of you. Congratulations. You want to say anything? <laughs> speech, I speech. I remember, you know, St. Henry District High School. This is my 24th year at St. Henry. I, I was born and raised in Erlanger, and th this is truly an honor on behalf of St. Henry and for our volleyball team. Uh, we were thrilled to be in attendance tonight. I'm learning a lot. Congratulations to Frank. All of his kids have attended St. Henry and most of the, uh, the family we hope to have at St. Henry. So <laughs> thank you very much. Congratulations. You're going to do Mark Stewart's. No, Dave is it? David. Now it's time for our service award ceremony. David. And Mark Stewart. Front and center. Well, thank you all. 
uh, you all know Mark, when, I, when he, he was informed that he was uh, getting this pen tonight, he, he, you know, in his very jovial way, how Mark <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> certainly volunteered to come here, so he, here he is, so uh, <laughs> glad to have you, Mark. <laughs> he told me to be brief, so I will be brief. Uh, Mark came to us in uh, November of 99, so uh, as you know, this is his 15th year. So he started at the Northern Kentucky Area Planning Commission, uh, now the Planning and Development Services of Kenton County. And he came here with already certified as the building inspector, so he was ready to go. Uh, Mark is a very, ass, a very good asset for me. He keeps everything running smoothly with the, with the permits, the zoning, both zoning and building. The, uh, uh, keeps, keeps me apprised of everything that's going on uh, it's with all the other stuff that I've got going on, so he keeps me up to date. So in keeping with uh, Mark's wishes, I just want to congratulate him on 15 years. Want to say anything, Mark? Please. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been interesting and not boring, 15 years, um, but it has been very quick. I can't believe it's been 15 years already. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for your support, and uh, we'll just keep it going on. <laughs> Dave, you ready? We do have a service award pen for Steve Lump this evening. Uh, he cannot make it. I believe today is his shift day at Fort Thomas. So he started with us 25 years ago. I know you remember that. Oh, so. stop. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's one of the babies I trained. <clears throat> yes. I think he's close to retirement age, right? Oh, shut Come up. On. <laughs> we would just like to uh, <laughs> thank Steve, and uh, we'll make sure he gets us. Thank you. Give, give him our thanks. Yep. Now it's time for the mayor's report, and given the tone and nature of the evening, I have no report. We'll move on to the next uh, reports of standing committees, public safety and police, Ms. Sudcamp and Ms. Pitts. One moment, please. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Okay, we have an attaboy for um, uh, Josh Nezzi and Joe Gonzalez. Uh, Josh is brand new on the scene. And we had a lady that wrote a letter to them. She was 87 years old and she lives on Shady Side Drive. And she wanted to thank the officers for changing her tire a couple weeks ago at the cemetery. God, what a neat story is that, huh? She said they were wonderful with her and just wanted to let you know how much she appreciated them and the department. So, you know, just one more example of where well, we go one step further. End of report, Chief in the House. Chief. And further, Any questions of Chief Aarons or the committee? We'll move on to public safety fire and EMS. Ms. Skidmore, Mr. Dunoff. I have two letters to read. And this is kudos to the fire department. This letter was received from a mother discussing a run we made for her son to go, Silver yeah. Lake Rep Center in September. Okay. Dear EMS heroes, there are no words strong enough to appropriately express our gratitude. On September the 4th, two amazing EMS staff responded to a call at Silver Lake. These individuals saved our six-year-old son's life. The emergency department medical team, along with the PICU and neurology teams certainly did their part as well, but your care gave him the opportunity to survive. Andrew was discharged in the middle of last week and is doing remarkably well. His official diagnosis was viral encephalitis, shock, and respiratory failure. He only spent two and a half days on a ventilator. They could not determine the cause for this horrific event. In all the haste in the Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center Emergency Department, we neglected to thank Andrew's first responders. We praise God for your intervention in the noble career you have chosen. While these snacks feel like a trivial gift compared to the gift you gave us, we hope they will provide some comfort during long days or nights 
And may God bless all of you and your families. Love, the Irwin family. And that says a strong, great job goes out to the firefighter, paramedic, Doug Rolfe, firefighter, paramedic, Kyle Schauer, and firefighter EMT Chase Autry on their efforts to save this young man's life. You can clap well, now, and then I'll do stuff. the second one. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you'll make sure this gets in their files, right? All right. Okay, and the following is a message received from EMS coordinator Rhonda Wolf discussing exemplary performance by two of our firefighters. I would like to take a moment and thank Randy McMullen and Jay Kelly for providing exemplary service to one of our Erlanger residents. A resident called 911 requesting transport to St. E. Florence because his wheelchair was missing and he believes it was left at the hospital from an earlier hospital visit. Firefighter paramedic Randy McMullen and firefighter EMT Jay Kelly responded to this call and transported the patient to the hospital, located his wheelchair, and then transported him back to his home. This type of act is what makes the Erlanger Fire EMS department one of the best of its kind. I am so proud of these two gentlemen as they are truly serving this city with integrity and pride and displaying true professionalism. And we have uh, a bid to be read later on in the meeting that uh, Assistant Chief McQuarrie will bring up and he is in the house. Do you have anything to add? Nothing further. Any questions of the committee? This is the time to tell you, if you guys want to leave, you can. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be offended. You're we, will not, we will not be offended. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. Thank you. Congratulations, ladies. Off the hook. Good job, ladies. See y'all in 2015, 2015. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's up to you, isn't it? Don't <laughs> pay body, free lunch. Oh, free lunch. Okay. I didn't want them to feel like they were a captive audience being held here. The next is the Public Works Committee, Mr. Cahill, Mr. Brown. Yes, uh, yes, sir. So uh, you should have gotten a report from Mr. Bogart. Uh, just to let you know about the leaf collection, uh, we actually, Mr. Bogart's team uh, got 11 and a half total loads of leaves for the first week. So that's about 207 cubic feet they've gotten so far this year. And that's just in the first week. So it's a great service we're providing for the community. And I see people pushing them out there already, waiting for us just to pick up those leaves. I think it's great. Um, potholes, we have been repairing those. You know that's my favorite subject, the potholes. <laughs> so, but the pothole line is not open yet, but it will be soon. And then Mr. Bogart will be answering it personally, and he is in the house because Mr. Brown is busy right now. <laughs> Bogart. <laughs> Anything to add? Any questions of the committee or, or Rick? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on to the administration committee. Mr. Longshore, Mr. Burke. I've got a couple things before we get to Mr. Longshore. I want to announce the administration department will be closed the 27th and 28th of November, which is Thanksgiving. The garbage will be picked up on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, what else we got? Uh, we've already collected uh, over $3.5 million in taxes in the month of October, which is really good. Uh, passports, 56 passports this month. Total mm -hmm. for the year is $26,750. And the last thing is to give you a little report on the farmer's market, how they did this year. Through May through October, gross sales was over $76,000. Wow. That's great. That's, that's, that's good stuff right there. So that's, good stuff. that's all I've got. Mr. Longshore. I said a few reports on uh, committee meetings on 1021. <clears throat> we had a meeting <coughs> regarding the zone change request for doggy daycare. Uh, the, uh, uh, the committee uh, decided we'd go forward with that. Uh, also, meeting on the tax increment financing. I uh, just want to report progress as well as progress on the edge incentive as well. And Missy Anderson is in the house. Missy. 
Any questions of the committee or Ms. Andrus? All right, move on to the Finance Committee. Mr. Howard, Mr. Blankenship. Uh, the auditors have completed their field work and are now busy preparing the comprehensive annual financial report. It should be ready for a formal presentation at the December Finance Committee meeting. We had a Finance Committee meeting on October 21, at which time Greg uh, Engelman presented an overview of the fiscal year 2015 budget amendment, which is on tonight's Sorry, council meeting agenda. And you were also sent a copy of the September 30, 2014 financial oh statements God, on the 20th. I'm sorry. Oh. Greg Engelman's in the house. Mr. Engelman. Any questions of the committee or Mr. Engelman? Seeing none, we'll move on to the Friendship City Networking. That's uh, Ms. Cahill tonight. I know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> she tells me what to do, so I'll do it all tonight. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. And thank you, Becky. I, I ask her for hard copies. I can't stand looking at those computers right now. I just, I got to have mine in front of me. Uh, October was quite an eventful month here in Erlanger. The month began with Erlanger participating in the library's first ever Fall Far Har Harvest Festival on Saturday, October the 4th from 1 to 5. There were booths, music, and hayride. First time event on a very chilly day. The attendance was good, over 200 visitors to the city booth. Uh, it was excellent. It was really a bad day, but it was really great with the hayrides and everything. Excellent. And Becky was sticking it out there with her, uh, her uh, great... Uh, Apple cider was awesome. And then the next was the city's pumpkin patch party, which occurred on Friday, October the 17th from 6 to 8 at <clears throat> the Depot Museum Park. There were games, hot dogs, cotton candy, popcorn, and drinks. Making a return this year's event was the Haunted Caboose, featuring the ghostly conductor, our own councilman, Jim Brown, the weeping widow, Faye Whaley, the historical society, and the evil character played by Mike Jansing. Evil character, Mike Jansing? Oh, okay. Um, out of character. Another popular attraction was the face painter who had just moved to Kentucky and is credited for being the makeup artist for Cirque du Soleil performance wow. group. It was another sunny but windy evening. <clears throat> the expert assistance of public works crew, the event was held on the gorgeous grounds, landscape to perfection. Did an excellent job setting it up and cleaning up and everything. Public works, Rick, thanks them all. They did a great job. The event saw a particular number of new volunteers coming to assist, including several students, a business owner, Mary Ryder, and others that lent a hand that day and evening. The city is particularly grateful to the, uh, the sponsorship of Silver Lake Kroger Cultural Council, who provided all the drinks for the evening, including apple cider, water, hot chocolate, as well as delicious clementines and apples for all the children that got in their bags. And last <coughs> but not least, the city wishes to extend thanks to Bluegrass Meats for donating 600 hot dogs for the celebration. And then the next event was the city participated in the annual trunk or treat hosted by Erlanger Baptist Church, and that was on Sunday, October the 26th, from 4 to 6, and then over 1,000 children participated in that. And then October wrapped up with the city participating in the library's trick or treat party. That was Wednesday evening, October 29th, from 7 to 8.30, and that had over 200 children. <clears throat> the upcoming events are... Senior Thanksgiving luncheon, Tuesday, November the 18th, and Thursday, November the 20th. So we have two, two. All right, that's great because we can accommodate more, more people. That's excellent. Great. Good job. Uh, and it's from 1030 to 1230 at the library. This year there will be two seatings of 100 for senior citizens or senior Thanksgiving luncheon. Colonial Cottage turkey and dressing will be served to seniors by city and library volunteers. There will be a trivia and a few added surprises this year. Reservations are being accepted by calling the library at 859-962-4000. This is a great event. I'm glad we doubled it up because we always can never accommodate everybody. That's great. Then we're going to have a Christmas tree lighting ceremony Friday, December the 5th at the Erlanger Depot Park Museum from 6 to 8. The city of Erlanger is hosting its first ever tree lighting ceremony at the beautiful Depot Museum Park. The event kicks off with lights coming on at 6 p.m., followed by carolers, hot chocolate, and a visit by the big man himself, Santa. Other, detail, other details are still coming together, but do plan on joining us for the lighting for the big blue spruce at the entrance of the park. More information will follow on our website and Facebook, Facebook page. The City of Erlang is hosting its first ever tree lighting ceremony. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and then Sunday, December the 7th, at the Erlanger Branch of the Library from 1 to 4, that's our holiday extravaganza, 
What a better way to spend a Sunday afternoon with the family. Come on over to the library for the annual holiday extravaganza featuring carriage rides, a visit from Santa, and crafts. Bring your own camera and prepare to get into the spirit. That's it. Ms. Hopkins, you have anything to add? Is that all, Kathy? That's it. <laughs> you, very good. We'll move on to reports of special committees, the Cleanup Berlanger Committee. Mr. Cale, do you have a report this evening? No report. Okay. Um, and then the Friendship Garden Committee, Patty? We're good. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> You're working it, huh? Yes. You all have heard the reports of standing and special committees. I'll entertain the motion to be adopted as presented. Motion by Mr. Burke, second by Mr. Dunoff. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Any, any, report, any of the representatives from the organizations that we affiliate with have any reports this evening? Next on our agenda is reports of city operations. First, Mr. Viox, our city engineer. Yes, sir. We have a number of projects going on at the, at the moment. Uh, we have put a couple of those on the contractors on hold only because they haven't yet been able to uh, start the demolition of some of the streets that we're going to re redo. And so we're holding them off to springtime so we don't have them open up during the wintertime. Uh, they're making great progress on the roof. And Rod informed me tonight that he no longer runs to the basement when a dark cloud comes over. Oh, so good. that's all I have, sir. <laughs> all right. Any questions of Mr. Viox? Next is our city attorney, Mr. Wickman, 50-year Wickman. Thank you, Mayor. I, again, have no report, but uh, except to thank you all very much for the memor or for the proclamation and the honor. And I'm just very humbled by it because it's a, it's a pleasure to work with you all. Thank you very much. Any questions of Mr. Wickman? Okay, next, our city administrator, Mr. Fields. I have no report. Wow. I know, you're shocked. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, wow. We're good. <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Fields? You've heard the brief reports Wake of city operations. Up. I'll entertain a motion to be adopted as presented. Motion by Mr. Burke, second by Mr. Dunoff. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Correspondence, Ms. Hoffman. I have one. Um, Missy Andrus received a thank you card from Terry with KLC. Um, she said, thank you so much for helping to judge our KLC awards. Does any member of council have any correspondence? <clears throat> Seeing them, we'll move on to the time of our agenda we reserve for citizens and public comments. We have had two folks sign up. First is uh, Mike Winkler. Good evening, my name is Mike Winkler, and my uh, little talk here might be a little bit premature, uh, but I work for a company called Clean Air Concepts. Uh, we're based out of Cincinnati, Ohio. I've been with that company for over 30 years. Uh, we've been in the business of manufacturing uh, ventilation and exhaust systems for the fire stations for 20 of those 30 years. And uh, I just learned this evening that uh, we were not going to be uh, the vendor recommended for this for this bid opening, uh, and uh, I have some reservations about that because this is being paid for with grant money from the department uh, from the FEMA department, and it's favors it's supposed to favor low bid, and uh, our bid was uh, low by a very large margin. Uh, the reason we are low bid is because we're based in Cincinnati. Uh, my competitor is based in Wisconsin. So our cost of installing this will be considerably less. Um, we have customers all over northern Kentucky, all over the uh, state of Kentucky, all over the United States, and we've actually all over the world. And one of our customers is the city of Erlanger. And we installed a, uh, a system for the city of Erlanger about, uh, was it about 16 months ago, 18 months ago. And to date, we have yet to see, receive one single service call system has worked perfectly for the entire duration that the system has been put in place. So the question I want to ask the, uh, the committee is, is that the uh, why isn't Clean Air Concepts earning this business since we've done well over the last 18 months and since we are the lowest bid? And we are an American company with most of the product made within 50 miles of where we're standing. 
Uh, the competitive bid that they're going to be recommending is actually foreign made. Uh, I believe it's made from Poland. So once again, uh, I have reservations of the recommendations. I think it should go to lowest responsible builder, bidder, which is clean air concepts. Um, we're a reputable company. We were the only company that meets all the specifications that were put out. Uh, so once again, I ask for, for your support. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next is, I hope I read this right, T.D. Dierker? I couldn't tell if that was an R before the K. Welcome. Thank you. I've got a doctor's signature. <laughs> uh, my name is T.D. Durker. These are my children. Uh, we brought three of our seven children tonight. We live on in the Lakemont subdivision uh, off of Nelson Road. And you know there's a lot of connectors there. Actually, we live in the home that originally owned a lot of that land. So there's a, like a gentleman's farm there that we live on. It's about nine acres of land. We own five different parcels. And we've noticed since we've lived there that it's just a very dangerous road. Uh, cars speed down Nelson Road, and there's a couple of crests. It's very blind uh, for people that are on bikes, that are on foot, this type of thing. Is, it, is it after the Doe Run uh, stop sign yeah, as, you're, as you're heading into this development? Yeah, so if you, okay. if you crest over the hill by the fire station, you come up, and then you come down to the first stop sign. Yeah. And then you continue on to that pond on the left yeah. down in Lakemont. It's that area right there. There's a lot of road frontage with a white fence. That's, okay. that's our property. Okay. Uh, we love it there, uh, but we really cower when we, it's, it's not so much for us. We see different people walking. We don't walk on the road very much because it's very dangerous, but there's people walking. And there's forever, you hear people saying, slow down. You know, they're yelling at the cars as they're flying by. Typically, I find that it's uh, either... Um, kind of young urban professionals on their cell phone or high school kids that just aren't paying attention. My dog was run over four years ago on that road. Um, the, the idea that I just would like to do, I didn't want to kind of get any uh, strong sense other than just get this process started to understand, you know, what either political or financial support my family can give. Could we give our land to have the sidewalk put on our land? I'm really not sure. Uh, I'd just like to see if, if we could create some safe solution. You've done a great job of connecting so many of those neighborhoods back there and I think really that stretch is really the last part standing that's not connected. And I just, I don't know where to start, so I thought we'd start here. I drove that today on my way back there to vote, and I was thinking the same thing. Were so, you really? Great. So we'll have to, because we're, we're really we're trying to find sidewalks everywhere that we can and looking for grant money and that sort of thing. Okay. So Mr. Fields, is, we'll have your name and your number, and we'll start okay. down the road. And if there's a way that I can help, if I can I actually support it in a way of making telephone calls or helping administratively, I'd be happy to push it along. Thank you very much. Okay. Great. We've actually began these conversations. Uh, Mr. Bogart and I have talked about it a lot, looking out for funds and other people I, I know in Mr. Chisholm's area out there have looked and, and brought this same thing to our attention. Okay. So we are looking at, we will get in contact with you. Good. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at property that Property will of be part of that. Okay. I'm, Love I'm to sure. help. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. See ya. Thanks for bringing it to our attention tonight. Well, thank you. There you go. <laughs> okay, now it's time for bids. Uh, we have the fire department exhaust system bid. Dave, are you going to make that presentation? Yes. All right. As I announced a couple months ago, we were awarded the 2013 assistance to firefighters grants, uh, and that was for a source capture vehicle exhaust removal system for Station 1. Uh, the, the amount of that award was $76,500. Uh, since then, we've put our specifications together. It's gone out to bid. We've got all those back, and we'd like to make a recommendation tonight. Uh, that system uh, will attach to the trucks to remove all the toxic uh, exhaust gases from the station to eliminate you know, our firefighters from being exposed to that. Uh, same type of system that we were awarded on the 2011 AFG. Uh, the grant does cover 95% of the funds, with 5% being our responsibility. Uh, with that being said, we'd like to recommend the purchase of a Plyme event system uh, sold through Hastings Air Energy. Uh, with options, the total cost of that system is $76,850, uh, just a tiny bit above the awarded amount. We never like to give money back to the federal government, so they don't like it either. So uh, That brings our share of the grant award to $4,175. Four so. um. Is there a desire, is, has the committee been involved in, the, in, in this grant issue? Uh, because of what Mr. Winkler brought up, do, do we want to have a committee, committee meeting on this and just make sure? Yes. I think yes, because mm -hmm. I've got some council members over here asking me, 
how it happened, and, and, and I would like to know myself, so I would, I, would, okay. I would recommend that we do take it to committee. All right, then uh, this recommendation will be received, and there will be a, a committee meeting of the fire committee, which usually includes us all, but, but primarily the fire committee, and we will, when, let's see, today is the 4th and 14th, the 18th day of November, two weeks from tonight, yes. at 6 o'clock, 6.30. 630. I'd like, I'd like all counsel on this one because we're spending such time. Sure. Right. You got that, Mr. Winkler? The, the, eight, the 18th? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. Yes. I would yes. think it would be to your advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Starts well, at 6, starts at 630. It's 630 on the 18th. Good. We'll right here. Right here. Okay? And I would, Very good. I would like to have all the bids at the meeting. Yeah, have all the, all the materials there. Okay, Dave? Absolutely. Right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. That bid is received. Um, is there any reports of work in progress this evening? Yes, Mr. Howard. Yes, Mayor. Uh, I got a, we got a Facebook page uh, from you just a couple days ago about the, uh, about the railroad underpass, and uh, I've been getting a couple, several emails about that from other residents, and I thought maybe, maybe from an open, with an open meeting right, like tonight we could maybe report on what's going on with that in progress. It um, became an issue in the um, mayor's race, when the fellow uh, running for me says he contacted a government relations gentleman for the railroad and said they'd be delighted to split the cost of maintaining the the, um, the, the railroad with us of the underpass. So then we, I called, no kidding, his name is Jimmy Carter in Atlanta, but I called, <laughs> I called Jimmy Carter, who's in charge of all of the bridge underpass overpass in this entire region. And Mr. Hahn got a hold of um, Aaron, can't think of his last name, um, who is in charge of, what's his last name, David, do you remember? I have it written down at home, but, but he's in charge of all of the bridge work, overpass, underpass in the Commonwealth of Kentucky for the Norfolk Southern. And Jimmy Carter told me, no way, Jose. We do not pay for the way that our equipment work looks we keep it functional we keep it structural but we you know what what looks good to somebody looks bad to somebody else we don't go down that road at all and I don't know who your opponent talked to I don't know either uh, but David got the exact same information from uh, the, from Aaron Aaron Meyer is his name Aaron Meyer in Somerset and what and, and of course they'd be happy to that we were we're free to do it ourselves they're not going to participate in it but the cost of painting this bridge overpass here is estimated at a half a million dollars. And the reason it's at a half a million dollars is that the paint that's on it right now is lead-based. And you have to follow EPA regulations to remove that, which includes stopping the Dixie Highway, encasing the, um, the bridge in canvas, plastic, whatever they do. The workers who go in to take it off have to wear the, the gas masks and the, the hazardous because it's all lead-based stuff. And the estimated cost for that is a half a million dollars. Uh, we've applied for grants to do that. Uh, we have, don't have any yet. We will continue to apply for grants to do that. Um, it was interesting, you know, to, it, it, during campaigns, and we don't know who won yet, and maybe I'm not here in six months, but, but it's interesting to see on a campaign when somebody says they talk to somebody and then they post it as a, as a campaign flyer, I can fix the bridge in 15 minutes on the phone. And so then I get on the phone and call the people who actually make the decision to write the checks, and they laugh at him. So that's, that's the report. We, we would love to fix up, to clean up that. And, and, and we have done lots of work on the hillsides over the years and done as nice as we can, but the actual painting of the, or, and cleaning up of the, of the uh, uh, trestle or the overpass part with the tr trains, we can't afford it, and they're not going to do it. So, yeah, Corinne. Isn't the other issue that also the trains do not have a set schedule, and when their supplies needed, they just go, and they don't change their schedule? For that, happens, that happens sometimes, but they, they, again, we were told we could do it. They would have to coordinate, tell us when we could do it, how we could do it, and what we'd have to do. In other words, it's it, 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 a money pit is yeah. what it would wind up being. So, Go ahead, Jim. One of the major issues, I'm sure we, you understand real quick, they would have to completely close the 
either the southbound two lanes or the northbound two lanes to do this work because they can't get the clearance under the bridge uh, by netting it. Right. Grouse indicated. So therefore, you'd have to direct all the traffic in both directions under one side of that bridge, that underpass, and it would be a traffic nightmare what's being done. And it's not to say that it's not doable and sometime in the future it won't be done, but... That's why it's the cost, though. It's, yeah, it's, it, the cost is, is astronomical right now. Does that answer the question, Bill? That answers my question. I can pass it on, yes. All right, very good. The next, uh, is there any other business, new business for the good and welfare of our city? Yes, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be the tall one. Uh, we talked earlier about uh, the, uh, senior, the senior luncheon that's happening up, coming up for Thanksgiving. I also want to let you know that there's also another activity that's going on in the city called Man and Mission, and where, we, where, the, where the less fortunate are fed. And uh, I bring that up because uh, organizations like um, the Lions are donating our turkeys. Uh, Kroger's itself is donating all the, uh, the desserts for that, for that meal. United Christian Volunteers is uh, supplying some of, the, some of the necessary food that's needed for that. So I'll let you, let you all know that you know, last year we fed 184 people uh, on the, the Saturday before Thanksgiving. So and this one's just another, one, another proof of how the city works to be able to not only feed the senior citizens for lunch, for their senior citizens luncheon, plus uh, what the city does to help uh, the people who are less fortunate who can't uh, even afford a meal. So, and that's at Erlanger Methodist, isn't it? That's at Erlanger United Methodist Church on right. Saturday, uh, the 22nd. Of Very good. Anything else? Yes, Mr. Burke. I just want to, I didn't, I should have done this under my report, but there's some uh, people I'd like to thank. It's the uh, Harry Riggs Jr. family for donating naval uniforms and that type of stuff to the Depot Museum and the Crump family for uh, donating some railroad books and some uh, children books from the 30s to the Depot. Oh, that's nice. Good. So I thought they needed a little shout. Yes, that's worth it. Anybody else? Okay, um, legislation, we have a first reading tonight. Mr. Wickman. Yes, sir. It's an ordinance of the city of Erlanger in Kenton County, Kentucky, amending Erlanger Ordinance Number 2397 and the budget adopted thereby for the city of Erlanger for the fiscal year beginning on July 1, 2014 and ending on June 30th, 2015. The amended amendments to the budget are attached to it. There is also attached to it a memo uh, that is not part of the ordinance, but it's for your benefit. I'll ask the city clerk to note in the minutes the first reading of this ordinance. Any other legislation this evening, Mr. Wickman? No, sir. That brings us to the end of our agenda. I entertain a motion that we adjourn. Motion. Motion by Mr. Longshore, second by Mr. Donoff. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.